Ignorance is bliss. I, once a mere animal, have been blessed with a pair of monumental gifts. The intelligence of a man, and mystical powers beyond my comprehension. This crude tome is a recounting of a tale that no other beast has ever experienced, and I will continue writing it as a lasting reminder of the long, frustrating, and ultimately rewarding path that I tread in this new life of priceless wisdom and unfathomable darkness. Hello, I'm John A. Douglas. I'm the author of The Black Crown, and it's Halloween. And you know, when Halloween hits, sometimes you want a special kind of book. Something that hits that suspenseful side. Something that tickles the, the thriller part of your, your book reading psyche. Sometimes you want books about interest, you know, monsters and ghouls and goblins and things like that. And then sometimes you just end up reading a book about a vampire gorilla. This is my review of The Tome of Apula by Arnold B. Carrero. Now, Arnold B. Carrero, the author, provided this review copy for me uh, in exchange for an honest review, which I will give now. And I'm going to just come out right out and say it. I really enjoyed this book. Probably one of the first things to note that, uh, especially with this hardcover version, is that it comes adorned with some pretty good art. And in fact, the entire book is littered with illustrations that come at very regular intervals. So you're never long without some kind of illustration punctuating a particular scene that you're writing. Now, I will say the format of this book is formatted very oddly. Uh, where I used to write on FictionPress.com and then people who are familiar with FanFiction.net will probably recognize this formatting in particular where you have spaces in between bunches of paragraphs. That's not a deal breaker for me. That might be for some people. It didn't bother me. Uh, but I will say from the technical side, it was a little, it's a lot different from most of the novels that I read and most of the novels that I've grown up reading. But on the technical side of things, Aside from that particular bit of formatting and an occasional comma out of place, really on the technical side, this book was very solidly written. And what this book is, is a lot of heart. Arnold B. Carrero, if you follow him on Twitter, you can see he is obviously his own biggest fan. And this goes a lot of way into j injecting a lot of heart into the story. And I use that because it's the heart of this story that keeps it truly alive, even though the main character doesn't have a functional heart anymore. I know you would think a book about a vampire gorilla would be the stuff of sci-fi original movies. And indeed, it does sound like one, but it follows a very different path than you think. Rather than something like a vampire biting a gorilla and the gorilla goes on a rampage, which what you would normally expect in this kind of fair. What you end up getting feels uh, like it wouldn't be too far out of place in the Planet of the Apes film. Now, I fully confess, I have been a fan of the Planet of the Apes film since I was a teenager. I enjoyed the first and second movies. Uh, I didn't watch much of the TV show or the sequels after that, but I highly enjoyed Matthew Vaughn's prequel movie trilogy, which not only expanded on and built up a great prequel story, and you know I'm not huge on prequels, but it helped give a lot of contextual information for how that world became like it was, and it set up the original Planet of the Apes movies very, very well. The book starts with something of a strange prologue that addresses you, the reader, walking into a shop filled with a bunch of mysterious artifacts and you end up finding a book and it addresses you directly, finding this tome and taking it home to read it. The book after this point is told in first person by Apula himself, starting with his time as a alpha male, silverback gorilla in his tribe, getting bitten by a character who becomes known as the Vampire King. After this, Apula becomes a vampire, but also grows in intelligence, learns how to speak, how to read. From here on, the book is told in great detail, almost exhaustive amounts of detail 
about the step-by-step -step process by which Apula ends up learning to become a vampire, learning the lore of the vampires, the history, while still staying in touch with this vampire, this vampire king benefactor who gifted him the ability to be become a vampire and become one of his uh, luminaries. Luminaries are essentially the vampire king's subordinates. Uh, they're very special vampires that are meant to basically serve as his highest lieutenant. It doesn't follow a traditional story arc. It si simply feels a lot of times uh, like an exhaustively detailed travelogue or a personal journal detailing how Apula felt as he became a vampire and then found his first lair, how he subdued nearby creatures, created his own minions, stayed in touch with the vampire king, and how everything in that particular uh, area started him to grow. In the wrong hands, this kind of thing can end up being a little bit self-indulgent and boring. And there are times where there's a little bit too much that's going on into the detail of how Apula feels about this, that, or the other. This ends up being punctuated with fight scenes and action scenes that are really well told and uh, go a long way in keeping things from being too boring for too long. Now there's a lot of secondary characters and very imaginative ones as well that end up coming along and, and dealing with Apula himself. But it's Apula that steals the show and the biggest surprise about Apula himself is that over time as he become, grows and becomes a vampire rather than just being a ravenous bloodthirsty beast he becomes almost more human to the extent that once he discovers reading and loving reading he almost becomes sort of a benevolent force of nature that doesn't respond to everything with immediate death and dismemberment his adventures in finding subordinates ends up being very well told, very interesting in his regard to other creatures, uh, particularly when he takes over his lair, he ends up subduing the massive crocodile. He doesn't turn it into a vampire, he, but he makes it his own subordinate, his own minion. And especially the chapter in getting one of his personal army, a bear fang chimpanzee that attacked his father's tribe and essentially was kind of like a childhood bully or a childhood terror. He ends up making this character his minion uh, that su is subordinate to him. And there's a few flashbacks to important events in his life that are told in exhaustive detail that give the context for how he felt about something and how he is now uh, above the fray, and but ends up being somewhat magnanimous towards these other creatures, so long as they serve him, of course. Probably the most interesting chapters are the ones where he ends up taking a bit of a divergence and learning things that you don't often see in vampire-related media. Media. Specifically, a chapter where a missionary, a Christian missionary, comes up to him and is not afraid of him. Apula ends up uh, having a fascination with the Bible the missionary was carrying and going through it and finding, uh, finding out the relationship between God and these vampiric creatures, which are obviously unholy and obvious, uh, obviously would be his enemies. But he doesn't feel that uh, he's enemies with Christians or with God because he didn't have a choice in becoming a vampire. It's it's an interesting bit of inner monologue, and and you don't often see that. Seeing his reaction to watching movies relating uh, to apes like Planet of the Apes and King Kong, his amusement at this is is very interesting, as well as his love of books in general. Specifically fiction books where he uh, is amazed at how humans can write something that's entertaining. Yes, Apula becomes a bookworm. And it's very fun and it's very interesting. And it adds another layer to this character that you come to actually kind of like in a lot of ways. Even though you realize he's kind of a force of evil in the world. He, but he's situated on his own in the jungle. He's not really bothering humans. Often the humans that he comes into contact with are coming there and bothering him. Now there's even a chapter in which he details the kind of magic that vampires can learn and perform and goes through a, a spell list. It's really interesting. Everything that you read in, adds another layer to his character or, or another layer to vampire lore. It makes it really interesting and it never lets the story get boring. 
even if some of the dialogue and the narration uh, can get a little long in the tooth, keeping things interesting and not boring, moving along and very well, and also that layer of heart that I mentioned, go a long way in making this a fun, quick read. It's only about 200 pages, and I blew through it in a couple of days. I was really enjoying this, and it ends on an, uh, an open-ended note that hopefully leaves room for a future book that I would really like to read. The Tome of Apula is a perfect Halloween read for any book lover and for anyone who likes genre fiction, or you just want something that's a little lighthearted with a little bit of vampire blood and guts with a main protagonist that might surprise you and being very likable. The in-depth dialogue goes a long way in fleshing out this new world that April is exploring and you're exploring it and learning about it along with him. While by no means a kid's book, there is plenty of blood and guts in this. It is a vampire story after all and... Apula is not a gentle creature, a bit of a noble savage at times. I still absolutely wholeheartedly recommend this. This was a fun book to read, and I think you'll enjoy it a lot too if you give it a chance. And hopefully there's a sequel right around the corner for us. For the time being, I'm author John A. Douglas. Hail the Iron Age, and happy Halloween.